Hey everybody, my name is Pixel, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Tiny Bunny. If you remember where we left off the last time, our sister just came into our room because she was scared. Something was peeking through a window. We were going to watch a movie with her, and then all of a sudden a giant wolf jumped out of the darkness and ate us alive. All turns out, it was a bad dream. Now let's see what happens whenever we confront them about it the next morning. That's why I didn't want to laugh at Olya and her owl in the morning. Oh, ding dong! Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. So persistent. I felt extremely unsettled from just a silly thought and that our morning guests could have come from couldn't come could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind was urging me to hide in the closet under the table, behind the curtains where Olya always hides. Tasha, come here. I felt like kettlebells were tied to my feet, but still dragged them toward the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. My mom always winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars. Worse than bandits. At the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello? The senior officer, who wore a grim expression, nodded. A boy had gone missing yesterday. His name's Vava. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. What's the boy look like? He got kitty! There was a ginger boy around the age of elementary school, pictured with a wall carpet as the backdrop. He had a striped cat in his hands, and he wore a wide smile. No. I haven't. Are you sure? Look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone from around here. I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window? That's right. Your windows look straight at the forest, don't they? The window. The dancing creatures. No, I haven't seen anything. I see. He sounded tired, but his eyes... His stare, lo long and heavy, was full of suspicion. I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of guilt, which his giant shadow cast over me. The policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway. The stairway and the cracks in the ceiling, which I haven't noticed before for some reason. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it? Bit by bit. It's just our little daughter misses the city a lot. Misses the city, huh? Have the locals been treating you well? Yes, everything is alright. Thank you. Policeman pierced through me one more time with his brown eyes. My head started spinning. Um, can I help you somehow? I asked that in a shaky voice to look like a polite boy and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Now that I think about it, you look like just one of my nephews, little fella. He's a witty boy around your age, wears the same type of goggles, ha <laughs> always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. Told me he wants to enroll in police school when his family visited this summer. Wanted to help other people, just like me, see? I felt uncomfortable, as if a distant relative and not a police officer stood before me. You know what? Little boys like you should stay at home, steer away from trouble. Times has changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Ah, uh, well then. What grade are you in, Anton? Sixth. Have you made any friends here so far? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. Ah, then I'll leave you my number then, just in case. Call me if you have any new info. He gives the kid the number? The policemen were going along with their shadows, the smell of cheap cologne and the photo of a smiling boy. His face still stood before my eyes. I wondered what it was like for him, being all alone, there. For some reason, I thought of the forest, swaying in the wind. What did his poor parents feel? And what would my parents do if I'd gone missing? Would they cry and thrash around hysterically? Or would they accuse each other like they always do and forget about me eventually? Mom, this Vava... Did he go missing in our forest? Seems like it, poor child. I looked out the window at the road. 
The police UAZ drove off towards the village. The officer's nephew came to mind when I was splitting off old paint from the windowsill. I remembered all the teenage mystery novels from the Black Kitty series I've read over this summer. Your average boys and girls investigated all sorts of mysteries there. They looked for clues, spied on suspicious people, and after said amazing adventures, BAM! Solved any complicated case. They became local celebrities and must have made their parents very proud. I noticed a trail of policemen's footprints that led into the forest, and then it clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Maybe I'll find that lost boy, and I'll get a reward. Olya will be so happy. And not only Olya, Mom and Dad too. Maybe they'll even forget about their quarrels for a while. Maybe I'll even save us from the D word. I fantasized about buying Olya a Tamagotchi and getting a cassette player and a bunch of tapes for myself and a whole box of Kinder Surprise. When was the last time my parents bought us any toys? Last autumn, I think. My dad had lost his job at the time. There's that annoying song about it. I had little to no idea what was the accountant's job like. They count money, I think. Neighbors used to envy us. But nowadays, mom and dad barely had any money to afford sweets, and dad would always divide a single chocolate bar between me and Olya. Sometimes I gave her my share too. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, she was still just a pipsqueak. Oh shoot. I'm going outside. Yeah, right. You want the police to go around with your photograph next? The forest is so thick. What if the boy got snatched up by wild animals or something even worse? Even worse? Echoed through the hallway. I won't go far. I'll stay away from the forest. Did you hear what I said or should I repeat myself? Better go pack your school bag or play with Olya. Thanks, Mom. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. It meant that the argument was over and Mom had the last word. Oh, we got we got choices. Uh, what's in what's in here? The dark, stuffy closet. Mom says it smells like mice, but how would she know their smell? She hates when I stick my nose in there. She's afraid I'll cut myself on the freshly sharpened axe. And Olya can't even be lured close to it. She thinks Babai is living there. I tried to help her fight her fears once more, and I opened up the door and turned on a dim lamp so she would see there was nothing but cobwebs, dad tools, and scratched walls. She still didn't believe me. And I'd like to hide in the closet and listen to Olya count outside. One, two, three, better hide from me. And then drag her feet on the creaking floorboards, hoping that she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monster's den. <laughs> Alright. Hey, Mom. Let's open it. Let's open it. What we got in here? Grandma kept ice cream for me and Olya there. But now I can only see meat bits for souped, clumped together pel pelmeny. I grew to hate them already. Alright. Alright. Uh, what's this eyeball? Oh, can inspect things. The side of an old ocean freezer was checkered with my childish drawings, mom's recipes, and all kind of stickers from bubblegum with dinosaurs that Olya likes so much. Among that still life picture hung a piece of ruled paper with the phone number for the police officer that visited us. First Lieutenant Tikhanov, I read inside my mind, looking at the officer's sprawling handwriting. A scrap of paper was held by two pieces of a broken magnet from some old Soviet toy, and those pieces just barely covered up the numbers as if to taunt me. I lean toward it to unveil the mystery and I take piece by piece to a safer place where it would wait for its time when I would finally find Vava and be the first to call the police with the happy news. Anton! Mom's reproachful eyes stared at me. What do you need it for? Hands off, you'll lose it. Angering my mom was the last thing I wanted so I lowered my hand. What's up mom? It was difficult to lie to mom but there was no other way for me to run away from home. Mom, something's wrong with the TV. The picture is dim and there are stripes all over the screen. Mom's face became visibly distorted. Ah, uh, you're killing me here. So have you had enough of shooting those stupid ducks now? Told you the kinescope would go dim because of your console. Where will we find a TV technician in this hole, huh? Maybe it's just the settings. Please, go see for yourself. Strange, it worked fine in the morning. Maybe the snowfall caused it? 
Mom rubbed her hands clean on her apron and went to Olya's room. All right. Now that Mom's gone, let's get the fuck out of here. Can't stop me, Mom. I opened the front gate and it went into the field. Carefully, so Mom wouldn't see me from the window. When I crossed half the distance towards the forest, the snow piles became as high as my knees. I remembered my nightly fears. I saw those silhouettes around here. They were jumping around, holding hands. That hypnotizing music started playing in my head all on its own. In the light of the day, those distant figures smell like a simple dream. The stun turned my nightmares to ash, but the aftertaste was still there. Distant ringing in my ears, distorted shadows crawling on the snow alongside me, and a barely audible whisper in my head, blurry and almost kind. Everything was silent, so silent that I felt like the world was totally empty. No ground, no sky, no parents, no Olya. The time reached its limit, a one-way trip that ended at the forest's piney stockade. Sometimes silence was much scarier than any scream. Our parents would scream at each other while arguing, both me and Olya turned to stone listening to them. But then always came the ringing silence. Our apartment became a numb a couple of days before we departed. It was hard to remember the last time mom and dad joked around, laughing, or spent time together, almost like all of it was in a previous life. When they kissed with Olya present, she always frowned and snorted in a funny way. But one day, it all changed. Something important had left our home, and something scary filled the remaining void. It was as if a fire broke out, and our parents were hurriedly packing their belongings, trying to save themselves and us. From who, though? From the people with dead, cold eyes who sometimes visited us in our previous home. The eyes that only saw balls of worms on the black ground and everything. And somewhere far away, a siren was going off, trying to warn us of the coming menace. I shuddered, chasing away my delusions, and I looked around. There were only me, this white field, and the wind that was whipping up icy dust and belts of powdered snow. I squinted from the sun and turned my eyes to the sunless forest. It looked especially dark in contrast with the blinding whiteness. Knobby tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. Rotten leaves and coniferous needles froze into the ice. Dry, prickly branches intertwined, bringing up uncomfortable thoughts about fences. Were they protecting the forest? Or were they keeping something from breaking out? Some object was hanging from one of the pointy branches. I tried to get closer, drowning in snow, and when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. It looked like a wounded bird among the hungering semi-dark. Should I take it to the police? Their senior officer looked gloomy, but he still reminded me of Captain Casanova from my favorite TV show called The Streets of Broken Lights. He was always anxious, with a tired look in his eyes, but still brave and strong. Will this mitten help them find the lost boy? Vova! I heard a distant shout. Looked like it came from the river. Vova! As if the trees were calling out to someone. Vova resounded closer to me. Someone was standing there, behind the trees, hiding. Vova! I knew someone was looking for the lost boy, but still, something was unsettling about that figure. Its stillness, how it was bent unnaturally towards the ground. Its blackness. There's no one there. Just branches and roots. It's all just my imagination. A nearby bird flapped its wings loudly. Oh, what was that? A shadow split from the tree and disappeared from my sight. I looked away for just a moment, but when I turned my gaze back to the same place, it was gone. So it was my imagination after all. Silence reigned for a painfully long time. There's a lot of- there's a thick forest. The mom, mom was not kidding. And may, maybe the young boy is the one who left this mitten. My muscles were tightly sprung. My heart was beating somewhere in my throat. Any noise, any little movement, any small whisper from the thicket, and I'd sprint. But nothing of the sort happened. I looked at the mitten once more. Take- take it! Get it! Just get it and run. I decided to take the lonely mitten from the branch. Oh no! 
Shadow person. Another shadow person. Boba. Get the mitten. Ah! A shout rumbled across the field and dissolved into the distance. No echo. No hope for a reply. Get the mitten. Oh my god, there's so many people. I stepped towards the bristly trees and tried to claim my find. It didn't budge. I pulled harder. The branch cracked and the mitten tore off, landing in my hand with a squishy sound. All too heavy. Wet. I squeezed it without thinking of something dark spilled from it, forming a tiny string between the mitten and the snow. Steam rose from the snow pile. Oh crap, that's blood. We've got blood on our hands. Oh no. Red. The sound of cracking branches invaded the silence. Uh oh, we need to get out of here. I didn't have to think twice before running away. Someone was chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine branches, closing the distance with giant leaps. Snow was slowing me down. Crazy thoughts flew through my mind. I'll get caught. They'll get me. I'll get dragged into the thicket. I'll be gone forever. But there was one more voice, probably one of reason. It gave me strength, spurred me on. You can do it. Don't stop. I heard an animal roar behind me. It was so loud, my ears went numb. I felt like the sound had come from a pack of hungry beasts rather than a single one. Their nostrils sucked in freezing air. They sensed my fear. Two giant wings flapped above my head. An enormous shadow flew over the clearing. A hoot. A wheeze. The roars were coming from all directions now. From the dried up raspberry bush, from the twisted pines, from under the windfall. Hurry, run, don't look back. It felt like I was inside a nightmare, the snowy clearing becoming vicious like quicksand. I was stuck in place. I pulled my leg from the mushy trap just to be caught in a new one, even deeper than before. I continued to drown, sinking deeper and deeper with every desperate push. Was snow ever this sticky? I screamed in horror after realizing this wasn't snow. Someone or something in the snow pile was clutching my pants. I gathered all my strength and rushed forward. The pressure on my leg was gone. My boots slipped out of the hole and my soles were on a hard surface again. I cleared with a clear I reached a clear path with one jump and from there ran to my house. Its gloomy facade didn't look threatening now. That house was my line of defense from the shadows that flapped their wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. I tripped over the doorstep and smashed into the door. In all my hurry, I still managed to notice the claw marks. As if a dog was striking the wood with its paws, demanding to be let in so it could be escaped the cold. I hadn't noticed these marks when I was leaving. The heartbeat in my ears was so much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. What if... They were already in our front yard and mom had locked the door. Drowning in fear, I pulled on the doorknob and it obediently gave way. Oh, we made it. I rolled into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Porch planks creaked as my pursuers ascended the stairs. My fingers slipped off the lock and I couldn't click it into place. I gritted my teeth and pulled hard on the iron knob, whipping it between the dwarves. I stared blankly at the door. Someone was standing on the other side of the pitiful, flimsy barrier that was probably less useful than blankets. Wheezing breath reached into the house and crashed at me in waves. It smelled of pine and sweat. Mom peeked out of the chicken and kitchen and chastised me with the same frigid voice she always used when talking to Dad. What exactly didn't you understand when I told you to never slam the door? I, I didn't mean to. I stuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone. The breath was, too. It's as, if it's, it's as if there was someone in the first place, of course. Here, a mere five meters away from Mom, my fear was slowly weakening. Melting like snow in spring, and with the last bit of strength, it had left my body, too. My legs gave way. I propped myself up against the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Mom's expression had changed immediately. The cold mask of stri strictness and detachment was gone. Mom looked the same as before, all those quarrels. She finally saw my condition, my wet pants plastered with snow. Where have you been? What did I tell you, huh? I told you to stay home. Am I nothing to you too? I got afraid she would cry. I reached out to her like when I was very little and wanted her to cuddle me. But Mom regained her composure fast and put on her usual face. Her eyes shined like steel. Her voice rang out. 
Your dad can't find his cigarettes. Be honest, did you snatch them? Were you smoking in secret? The, the, there was someone chasing me. I, I thought... I stuttered as soon as I started explaining myself. Tears welled up in my eyes. Mom leaned toward me and sniffed my clothes like a beast, searching for the smell of tobacco. Then she squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. Her expression changed in an instant as she covered her mouth with her hand. Look over there, at the fence. My heart started thumping as if I became prey once again and my pursuers were following me in the field. I could swear that I've heard someone scratching at the door, just like in my nightmare. Mom beckoned me with her finger and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look into the kitchen window, facing my fear. I could barely discern some hair hairy silhouettes swimming in the snow through the icy winter patterns on the glass. Dogs! Just a small pack of strays with no name and owner, barely reminding of the hungry monsters that live on the edge of the forest. Oh boy, were you scared of them? I think they'd be rather scared of you, Anton. They were chasing me, like a bunny. And what if they're rabid? The smile had slowly disappeared from my mom's face. Now she looked at the dogs as if it was her first time seeing them. What if they attack all ya? Mom? I wish your dad could just shoot them all. Mom, look! They're alive! Huh? What? Are they your friend or foe after all? Make up your mind. You're not a little kid anymore. Mom sighed in annoyance and I felt so bitter that I bit my lower lip and fixed my gaze on the cobweb, ridden corner just to keep myself from crying. Well, some detective I am. In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a sat pack of stupid strays. And for what for? What use do I have for this? Mitten. Of course. A dark and sticky mitten that belonged to the lost boy made a squishy sound in my hand. Seems like I was clutching it the whole time. That's my trump card as a detective. I hurried to present this clue to my mom. Mom, look, this is Volva's mitten. That boy the police were asking about in the morning. It's drenched in blood. I found it hanging on a tree. I can show where. Let's call the police right away like the officer had told us to. Mom, look. Ew. A shadow of doubt slowly crept into my mom's contorted face. It's as if she was trying to remember something distant, like someone tries to remember their dream, but the image slips away. Stop it this moment. Oya would go insane if she hears you. She already has trouble sleeping and whines all the time. And you joke around like this? At that moment, I realized the mitten was actually wet from snow. There was no blood whatsoever. I wanted to sink through the floor from embarrassment. Come here, my boy who cried wolf. Oh, don't just stand there. Come take your pills. A golden colored pill reminiscent of a dead wasp fell into my palm. I already took one during breakfast. Don't talk over me. I told you to stay home and you... Dad would have given you a good whipping for that. Come on, take it or you won't be able to sleep at night and you have school tomorrow. So I had to swallow the bitter medication, drinking it down with similarly awful water that gave off a taste of chlorine. Maybe it wasn't Vova's mitten. Maybe it wasn't a mitten at all. Just like the forest monsters and Olya's owl. Am I going mad? What's happening to me? Either the pill had an immediate effect or my overexerted brain didn't let fear inside anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing a yawny indifference along with it. Anton, you done? See, you can do it when you try. Take off your coat. Are you asleep? No, Mom. I was just thinking. What about, I wonder? It's just something silly. Mom scrutinized me with suspicious eyes, as if she wasn't sure she was looking at her own son and not some doppelganger that came from the forest. Is everything all right? You had the exact same expression when the police asked you about the window. I'm all right, Mom. She heaved a deep sigh. Fine. It seemed like the house had changed. The sofa's fabric had become discolored. Fingerprints appeared on the bathroom tiles. The light bulbs also felt different, dimmer, and yellower. Even the saliva inside my mouth had a different taste. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. Olya was done rewatching her favorite Little Mermaid episodes and switched to other tapes. I slowly changed into my home clothes, stopped before the sink, and studied my reflection in the mirror, like I was trying to solve one of those spot the difference puzzles. Then I went upstairs. And that is where we're going to stop for today. I am all out of time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, 
another really suspenseful, another action-packed episode. I am loving this so far. Just the, sh the raw emotions between these characters and what this child, Anton, is going through. I just can't wait to see what happens next. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to like the video. You want to see more content like this? You want to follow along with the story as far as we're going to go? Subscribe to the channel. Get notified when new episodes come out. You want to play this game for yourself? It's on Steam. Go check it out. You will not be disappointed in it. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.